Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining me as I explore the wide world of pens. And yes, you see a pen in front of you that maybe none of you have seen before, or some of you may have seen. Be interesting to hear in the comments whether you're familiar with this brand. And this is another pen that I got in trades with Dean. So I'm still in a buy no pen mood and that may continue on for a while but I got more than enough content for more videos and we're getting the pen coming in and out of sunlight so showing off this very very nice anodized coating that's my guess interesting minimalistic design so we're going to take a look at this pen in more detail talk about the Italian manufacturer that sells this pen and you know it has some interesting traits to it that I think you might enjoy learning about. Mr. Crab's going to give you a wink and we're going to continue on. So let's take a look at the pen, a little bit more detail. The first thing I think that strikes you is this interesting design of the clip. Nice and springy, very functional. I don't think those wheels actually turn, but it's going to be easy to slip over thick fabric and stay in place. The other thing that they did a little bit different is they label it underneath of the clip. Not exactly centered, but close enough. And the top finial in the cap is a piece of plastic that I think is used to keep the clip in place. And we have a minimalistic design, 10 millimeter diameter all the way up and down from barrel through cap. And then we just have a rounded end at the end of the barrel. This bronze finish on this paraphernalia Divina is very nice. I like it. I kind of talked about it being a coffee color. It's definitely in the brown family, but they call it bronze, so we will call it bronze too. A little bit of sunlight coming in there, so you get to see sunlight, LEDs, and whatever play across the color. The cap comes off, it has a secure feel to it, and we'll see that number five Schmidt nib steel medium and we saw it writes very well in fact I'm impressed this is the best writing Schmidt nib I've ever used but the bar wasn't set too high inside the cap there's a liner which is very nice and it facilitates capping the pen nice secure sound and it stays there doesn't turn doesn't move so that's a good design well executed it does post not real deep but that cap is extremely light it makes for a long pen we'll give you the dimensions at this point in the video a little bit early and miss Sizemore is getting in the way so we'll move her out of the way that section is on the small side again here's the dimensions but I find it usable to me, when you have a small section and a light pen, it works okay. I wouldn't want the section to be any smaller, but certainly if it was bigger, it would not fit into the aesthetics of the pen. The pen, I think, works the way those dimensions are now. And it's a functional pen. It's a very nice writing instrument. Let's talk a little bit about paraphernalia. They're Italian design company. Here's some references to them. 
when I did my search, it seems at some point in time, some American distributors and retailers sold their pens, but now they don't seem to. They made a very interesting ballpoint, which is still being made, the Revolution. Interesting triangular design, very unique. And at one point in time, they made a fountain pen version of that design, but no more. And it's not on their website. This is the only fountain pen that's on their website currently. And they've been making it, I think, for a while. Here's all the colors it comes in. A lot of colors. I would guess one of them might work for you. So I like the pen. I like the design. I like the way that it writes. So for those reasons, I give the cat the pen a big thumbs up. Let's delve in a little bit more and watch that nib write. Because that's what's important. Yes, I decided to disassemble completely the paraphernalia pen. And it was easy to take apart. So let's talk about the one unique feature. Here we have a section made out of injection molded plastic. And they molded in the nib collar with that little nipple at the end to accommodate the end of the converter. The converter disassembles very easily. This metal collar just unscrews from the barrel of the converter. And we just have a typical injection molded feed. Yes, I think they could have put more fins in there. You, know, you pull up ink here from the back, which might work. A lot of theories on it. I don't test them out as long as it works. And the nib, as we saw before, is a Schmidt nib. And it's a medium. And it's a number five. So what's really nice, and we have some interesting light coming in, is the color of this pen is just very nice. Kind of that cocoa color. Definitely in the brown family. And those finials are interesting. Not consistent, just like a one piece of uh, aluminum probably. It's very light. Same type of material used for the cap. So that's it. So when I reassemble this, I'm going to silicone grease this piston piece, which is just uh, one piece of kind of softer plastic. I'm also going to put some silicone grease on those threads, which makes it easier when you start turning the converter. And the main reason I do that is this pen will have a many years of life ahead of it with a little bit of silicone grease on the moving parts. For those doubting Thomases, and I think we should all be, you may say, how do you confirm that that's a one-piece injection mold assembly? There ain't no seam there, nothing to unscrew. And if you look at the back, you'll see that that piece is in there. It's an interesting design. I appreciate something new and different. You can still easily pull the nib and feed, so cleaning, thorough cleaning, is going to be easy. Something different that I enjoy. We've reassembled the converter, and it is very smooth operation. There's no key for that feed to go into this section, so you just kind of slip it in, and it fits in very nicely, seats up against the end of that barrier. But one of the downsides right now in this pen to me is this converter is about as loose as you want. It's not going to come off on its own, but I like something that has a little bit more of a substantial fit. I think both the uh, inner diameter and the outer diameter, there's a lot of looseness there, the tolerances. Maybe that's a product of the injection molding or worn mold or whatever's going on, but you know, most of the time the converter fits very, very solidly, nice secure fit, and this one is not that. So that's a downside to me in the manufacturing engineering of this item. For those of you that follow my channel, I constantly think about things, go over them in my head, and when I was doing my research on the Divina pen, they don't come with a converter. This is a converter that Dean 
choose to put into the pen. And this is just a standard international converter I had laying around. I don't even know where it came out of. You can see the similar design of the end. This fits very snugly in the back of the section. So, you can see a little ink when I played around with it that got in there. So the problem with this is not with the dimensions of the section, which I had thought, but some wear on this converter, which may not be that well designed and materials may not be that sturdy. So I'm glad I looked into that and I'm glad I realized that it only comes with a cartridge if you buy this pen. But standard international converter will work just fine. Let's use the LED to look inside of the cap and we'll see a nice one piece plastic liner in there. Expect that what makes that nice sound when you cap it and also I expect it to keep that nib wet because it's going to be a very little bit of air there and so should be airtight. Nice design. So along with some nice pens, Dean sent me some of these sample bottles from Ferris Wheel Press. A very small bottle, very small opening, but I felt that I could seal that opening with that small section, tilt the bottle, and be able to get a good draw of ink, which I was able to do. If this didn't work, I would have had to have gone to a syringe, which is not my preference. I know a lot of people like to do that, but I enjoy flushing and saturating the nib and feed when I do my ink fills, and I was able to do that using this approach. Not many pens are going to work for this, but this one did. So this writes very consistently. Here's my first writing example. And here's the second. As you can see, it's consistent. I've written a few letters with it and it's worked spectacularly, page after page after page. Which is something you have to give kudos to the design of the pen and how they've used that Schmidt and F nib and feed in that section that's their own design, or at least as far as I can tell. So that's good. So let's rate this pen. I'm going to give it a 9.6. It gets two checks for the nib. It's one check for design, build, and execution. It doesn't give more because it is on the small side, but it works, and it works well as a writing instrument. I think some people might like that with a fine or extra fine nib because this is a very good everyday writer, throw in your pocket, throw in your pen case, carry around with you, pop the cap and write, and it does write consistently. No drying out, no skipping, no hard starts. It's been a very reliable performer. So hopefully you've enjoyed this look at a pen I didn't know existed, and I'm very glad that I now know that it exists, and I'm able to show it to you. So thank all of you for watching. There's a lot less of you watching now than used to, but that's fine. Because I think my viewers are very nice and they observe and they interact. So that's the important part. And I enjoy making the videos and sharing them. It's great when somebody watches them. So we've reached the end of this video. Hopefully it finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your life, enjoying your pens, inks, papers, doing some correspondence, writing in a journal to yourself. That's fine. So we're going to say bye until the next video. Not telling when that might be, but I have enough stuff to keep me filming for a while. Ciao.